How's it going, everyone? I'm Mark. I'm Ian. And this is the Uncaped Crusaders Review. Well, we're back. We've been gone for about a month or so. Um, I've been in the process of moving, so that's why we haven't had regular episodes, and that's why we haven't had movie swap episodes um, up on our YouTube channel either. It's just because of that. So hopefully within the next week or so, we'll get back into the weekly uh, Batman reviews of the animated series and of the 66 Adam West show. Um, Hopefully within the next week or so, we can get back into that. And then... We'll figure we're, we're going to have to change the format for movie swap, obviously, because we're not in the same location. So we'll figure out uh, ways to get those up on YouTube um, in some yeah. in some sort of different different format. But um, all right, Ian. So now it's time to talk about the main event, which is, of One course, of solo show, yeah. which is, of course, the Batman, which thank goodness Warner Brothers had the uh, presence of mind to be like. All right, no, this is still our bread and butter. This is still what everyone is excited about. They're not as dumb or delusional as we might think they were. No, they they still have their moments, and it's like every time I have hope in them, they 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 remind me of the fact that they're they're Warner Brothers, and they really they, well now they don't not change. even AT and T. Yeah, but that which is probably just a different branch of stupidity itself. So true. Let's not give them too true. much credit. No, but no, not, no, no, they. they they totally at least redeemed themselves in that regard by saving the best for last. Yeah, and they were smart to do it too because totally. it just blew everything out of the water. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, just just with Matt Reeves' panel, like it was about 28 minutes long or something um, with uh, his that final fandom segment. It's really, really good. I, I, I watched yeah, the whole thing it out. and it's very interesting. He's a very interesting guy to listen to. Um, he gets it. He's very smart, not just as a filmmaker or as a writer, but as a Batman um, expert. Like he, okay. he, he knows what he's talking about. He breaks everything down super, super well. He did a great job of of giving a lot of information about the tone and feel of the movie without actually giving anything actually about the movie. Um, well, cause, well, trailer, one, yeah, obviously, because you don't want to do that anyway. And two, because they haven't no. done hardly anything. Still playing the film, yeah. Um, but but he still managed to make you feel like you got an insight into the movie, even without that. Like, it was very well done. Like, the guy is, yeah, is, it, is very smart. It wasn't just all the usual talking points about, oh, this is going to blow audiences away and something we've never seen before. And, yeah, no. you know, you'll be at the edge of your seat and just stuff you always hear with the marketing. But, OK, yeah, yeah I need to check it out. Made a big point about, you know, the the detective work, um, something we've not yes. really we, we really have not seen yet um, to a full extent. We haven't seen Batman in a detective film yet. No, um, no, we've all. seen scenes, but sure. yeah, never like that. There's been some moments, but there hasn't been a mystery Batman movie yet. It, it's no, been very no. clear cut. Here's the villain. He's going to, you know, blow up the city or whatever, you know, very straightforward right. comic book stuff, w- which is fine. Yeah. But, uh, you know, th- there's a there's a whole other element to Batman, which is very gritty and not even just gritty because we, we've had gritty. Sure. Very, very detective base, like like a single Noir, yeah. a single mystery, a single thing. It's not just a big super villain he has to stop. It, it's a particular, exactly. you know, because there's no mystery in that. The, the villain no. killed everyone like we know. So the, there, there's no mystery in it. It's just uh, stopping the villain. This is actually having to figure out who the villain, who the villain is, is. Yeah, exactly. And, and then how to stop it, you know, and all that stuff. So um, that's great. He said there was a heavy, heavy influence in 70s de- uh, detective movies. Um, sure. Uh, he mentioned Chinatown specifically, and there was another one specifically that he mentioned, and now I forgot. But he French mentioned a Connection. lot of... Yes, yeah, yes. Yep, that was it. Yep. French Connection. Uh, even mentioned a little Scorsese with some Taxi Driver. Oh, sure. Um, with some of that stuff. <laughs> Hopefully a little less uh, heavy-handed than Joker. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Hopefully it's not just uh, the... In- you know, uh, it's not just the entire movie. Um, yeah. Although to be fair, that movie is much more king of comedy than it is Taxi Driver. That's true. It's it's it's, it's both those movies combined, and that's all Joker is. It's it's oh, yeah. the most ununique. And you know what? Anyway, we've talked about it before. Um, yeah. But yeah, so he mentioned a lot of that, and it was just it it was just it was it was another one of those things where we've talked about this before. There hasn't been anything with this movie where we've been like, 
uh oh or Turned red off, flag yeah. or any like there there hasn't been. There's maybe been some I don't knows, but there yeah, hasn't like John, been J- like John Turturro as Falcone. I was a little bit yeah. like okay, yeah, but, or, yeah, nothing. Or even with like Zoe Kravitz, where I'm just like sure. I, I don't have an opinion one way or another. I I haven't seen her in anything except for Mad Max. So yeah, I, I've yet to be blown away by her. But yeah, yeah. So it's just you know, there's a few maybe we just don't know how to think about it but there hasn't been any like oh no red flags that, that yeah. hasn't happened one time yet not one time no, no. um and and then this just further gives me even more hope with uh with the film and then not even to mention just the freaking trailer that we saw which is Ugh. just and um i was trying to think about it what are i was trying to think of like my favorite trailers I, i've ever seen and i don't know because there's a difference there's the trailer one has to be a good trailer and has to be for something that you're really excited about so they they kind of have to go hand in hand and this is up there man oh totally with one of my all-time favorite trailers like it i i don't know if i could say it's my favorite one of all time but it is no it is up there Look, I, I am a huge buff for trailers. I, I rewatch trailers like I listen to music. Like I, when I'm writing or doing anything, I'll have a trailer on in the background. And like I, trailers give me goosebumps like no other thing can. And I, I tell you what, this manipulated man. You're the target audience. Absolutely. But it's also because <laughs> you're right. There is a difference between being hyped for what the trailer is for and then just being hyped about the craftsmanship of the trailer itself. Sure. And this is both because obviously nothing gets me excited like Batman, and especially a Batman I'm excited for, yeah. which we talked about. We haven't really been since, you know, we got the trailer for Dark Knight Rises back in 2011. Yeah. Um, and, and but this is also just a really well put together trailer tone is it, this is like the go to of how to do a trailer. Heavy, heavy focus on the music and very little dialogue. You do not want to reveal too much but you want to set the tone with the music and the atmosphere. And granted, mm-hmm. they also were kind of in a corner because they haven't filmed a whole lot, so they have a right. whole lot to pick from. But this is a perfectly constructed trailer just in of that self. Yeah, um, and they, then, were, they were able to tap into the, the, I don't know how to say it, the kind of generic, the way, you know, movie trailer that everything oh, yes, kind of is beats. now. Yeah, but, yeah. but without it, like, but that doesn't distract like, like they did it really well. So it's like, you know, cliches are cliches for a reason. And when they're done well, right. it doesn't matter if it works. And, and this is one where it is a very cliched movie trailer. It's the way most movie trailers are formatted with the music and the tone. And the, oh, sure. Then and out. But, but, we, but it works. It works. Oh, yeah. It and conveys even, we, everything you need to know about this movie at this point. It, it, it yeah. conveys the and, – and the biggest thing of that is the mood. The mood and the tone. Oh, yeah. It conveys totally. – in such a great way um and With the nirvana song the, yep. the the font of the, even, the title even the this nirvana song sounds like the batman theme that we heard in the oh, uh, i love how they blended it together how it fades into yeah. each other at the yeah. end yeah it's yeah so well done because the oh, beat yeah. of that song fits so well with with what the the music we heard in that, uh, yeah in that um uh, costume reveal yeah the so, first original teaser yeah right and with that that music, it it just fits perfectly with this. So whoever found that is freaking genius. Um, yeah. No, I mean, and, and thank God it stayed away from the really bad cliche of finding a song and doing like this <laughs> piano, uh, uh, not even acoustic, but dramatic yeah, yeah, cover yeah. of a famous song that has been so popular lately. Where it's, it's like, like who uh, who oh, who was there was a guy who did who made a YouTube video like making fun of. Uh, uh like modern movie trailers and, and oh, one yeah. of the things is just you just take you take a popular 90s song and just yep. put it in slow motion you know slow motion drop it yeah. down octaves and that's what every movie trailer does yeah they didn't do that they just took a 90s song that was already like that <laughs> exactly yeah and, that, and that's nirvana for you and it, it just it's crazy how well it went together where mm-hmm. you know you might hear that like oh the next batman trailer is gonna have a nirvana song you're gonna be like what yeah. And it, it, you I'm do not, not even get a Nirvana that fan all. either. I'm not, so. I'm not even. I, mean, I appreciate them, but I don't love them. But I, no, I'm the song opposite. Perfectly. I, I don't mind some of their music, but I definitely do not appreciate them. They're single-handedly oh, sure. responsible for ruining rock music. Well, that's fair. Yeah. It's you know yeah. I don't even hate Nirvana, but what they brought anyway. That's a whole different right. topic. But um, uh, yeah. But that that I mean that fits perfectly. 
we got to see basically everything we wanted to see something of. We yep. got to see every <laughs> character, a piece of every character. Except um, for Alfred. We got to hear Alfred, but yeah, we didn't get to yeah. see him. We, he sounds we didn't get great. to hear him. We got, we got to hear yeah. Andy Serkis. But again, you don't need yeah. to see Andy Serkis. We know what Andy Serkis looks like. <laughs> yeah, just he's never going to look any different unless he's a CGI character. It got, yeah, no. And, and apparently, I don't know if you saw, but uh, uh, Jeffrey Wright, pretty much everything we saw in the trailer wasn't CGI. It was all photograph which I, i'd have to go back to the fine tooth comb and make sure but i can believe that because i did not see any cgi that just stood out to me at first yeah maybe some maybe some backgrounds Touch a little up. bit or some of that stuff maybe but um but again they haven't done anything they haven't had time to sure. make any cg so i like i would believe most of that so i'm like they yeah, yeah, have yeah totally. time to do this um, but just it looks so good and, and just tangible and gritty i love it yeah another thing that i love we'll talk about the characters more in a minute but I love this Gotham feel already. Again, the, this yes. whole thing is about mood and tone because they didn't have much else to work with. Um, right. So they went with what they had. But I already love this tone of Gotham. And I love the way Matt Reeves has talked about it. Like he's wanting to make a city that doesn't look like any city we know. A, a different nice. city. It's a fictional place. It's not New York. It's not Pittsburgh. It's not Chicago. It's it's a different city so and you know to do that they're shooting all the exteriors over in uh over in the uk yeah and then just cgi in the modern buildings and and the skyscrapers and stuff like that and it's like that's freaking that's what gotham always was it was a go it's yeah. gothic architecture exactly and, and that's what cgi is for is to yes. is to you know enhance and, and do things that you can't you know where it's not to just rebuild an entire city where every background is fake it's like no people still need that that real kind of background, which you can get from, yeah, all the, the old Gothic architecture of, of England and Europe. But yep. still, of course you have to touch it up and make it the booming city that Gotham is, but yeah, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. No, it's 100% perfect. Um, so I already like that. And we haven't really gotten to see a real Gotham. I don't think since probably the first yeah. Tim Burton movie. Oh, really? So not even Batman begins. You think? Mm, no, not really. Um, I, I did. I did like the narrows. I did like the narrows. I know what you mean. Yeah. But you know, but it's still uh, cause, Chicago because that, that was the whole point of those movies was to make it realistic. It was not sure, sure, the, sure. The, the the cinematic you know extra stuff. Um, but no, I agree. That, that yeah, first, probably Tim that Burton. First, that first look of Gotham City is just amazing, and in that first Tim Burton movie, and it's all oh, sure. it's all staged, it's all sound yeah. stages, it's all that. But it, but it's it it captures that like we haven't really seen done before because then in the Schumacher was, ones it's very it's, over exaggerated yeah. and you know over ridiculous colorful and stuff like yeah. that you know the buildings are three miles tall and and you know stuff like that um and, and it, what people don't understand is that Gotham itself is a character and a mm -hmm. huge character mm -hmm. and, and that is something I don't care even the biggest Zack Snyder fan cannot defend it is that he does not appreciate the fact that both gotham and metropolis themselves are characters that you have to explore well, no because they're the same place in that, in that yeah, movie they're, um, they're literally all across the pond you know they're the same like the <laughs> exactly same. yeah they're um, just great buildings yeah cool but uh yeah so that's that that i'm already super excited about yeah love that uh I do think it was funny where he he said that Gotham Square is Liverpool, <laughs> and oh. then he was like, "Yeah, you know." So we went to Liverpool to do Gotham Square because we're not going to do Times Square because then everyone sees Times Square. But we're yeah, you know, thank Liverpool you. do that, and then add in all the buildings. And then he's like, and then you're watching, and you're like, "Oh, where is that?" And he's like, "Oh shoot, I guess I just spoiled that." But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty funny. That That's was cool. pretty funny, but. uh I was like, but you should appreciate that even more just because you've been over there and, and seen, oh, sure, seen yeah. a lot of that stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure I'll recognize some stuff, but I'm, I'm glad, you know, they're not going to. Uh, yeah, you don't want to go too far with a recognizable where, where it ruins the immersion of like, oh, there's Big Ben. You know, you can't you can't do <laughs> stuff like that. And so I'm glad he, he mentioned Times Square because, like, yeah, if you see Times Square, it's like, oh, I know that's not Gotham. Everyone yeah. knows where that is, even if you haven't been there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so that, so that's great. Already like that. Um, yeah. So characters, we, we got to see, I'm pretty sure every character, um, there, you know, I, I'm pretty sure that's oh. Colin Farrell. 
as yeah as if it penguin? is as crazy makeup as everyone's point out unrecognizable like unrecognizable. I, every single one of us the first time didn't even think about it and then the no. second time we watched it we're like wait a minute yeah i was like wait isn't the penguin in this movie is that the penguin is that colin farrell like <laughs> <laughs> yeah because you, you see him twice you see him in that close shot and you see him driving a car yeah um, and you, you hear him too because he, he's the one who says this guy is crazy yeah yeah so that's interesting and apparently the idea is all the villains, it, I, I like how he's doing, we're not, you know, not doing a Batman origin story, but yes. you're still doing a young Batman story, and you're basically doing an all villain origin story. I think that's brilliant. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Um, So we're going to get, you know, there's no Catwoman in this movie. There's Selena Kyle. There's no right. Catwoman yet. Um, I, I, Who knows if we'll even see her as Catwoman at all in this movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, maybe, I mean, maybe by the end of this, she'll have a more traditional costume or something, but who knows? Yeah, you you have Colin Farrell not as the Penguin. According to Matt Reeves, he doesn't like the name Penguin. Um, hmm, okay. So he's not. And to be honest, I, that makes sense for that character too. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. they did that a little bit in the Tim Burton movie. Um, right, it kind of butchered it, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, not well, but but that aspect I think is a good. It's a good character piece for that for that penguin character that that napoleonic complex or, or right. that, that type like of a, thing fit, so of course he'd be offended by a derogatory term like that yeah right but then of course you know at some point he'll who knows if he'll even ever adopt it maybe it'll just be something everyone calls him but he doesn't like that i don't i wouldn't mind that either to be perfectly no, honest. No, no, I'm, I'm fine with that too um, yeah and then you get to see i'm a, again we're all assuming that this is paul dano as the riddler the guy who's oh, dressed up in the, weird, be. in the weird leather mask um yeah it definitely sounds like him um yeah. Which I love the way he sounds too. Like when he's doing the the line about the riddle about justice. Like his, mm-hmm. his the way he distorts his voice is really cool and, and not traditional Paul Dano because I've, I've seen him in a couple of films and yeah. he's kind of got this mousy like oh type of almost a <laughs> Michael Sarah type of voice. Um, yeah, I've never but, seen him play anyone other than a passive, scared to death person. Yeah, yeah, that's that's about fair. Yeah, so yeah, yeah I think you're right. Yeah. So to see him as this crazy serial killer, I'm I'm really excited. Yeah, yeah, I like that a lot. Um, I, I mean, who knows if he'll have a more traditional costume by the end of it. I doubt we'll see a boiler hat and, you know, question mark suit, but still, he might not should. look like he does in the trailer by the end of it, but at least it'd be a different variation. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I do hope they don't go too far with that, because we've gotten to the point now where we do suits. We do comic yeah, book suits. We do yeah. comic book accurate suits. So I'm a little nervous that it is might be going more in the Nolan level as far as yeah. the costumes go. Yeah. I Just with mean. the tone of everything. Right. But but why can people not understand that it doesn't matter? You can still get away with making a movie serious like this and still have them in the real costumes. Like yeah, that, that doesn't turn people off anymore. No. So I, I'm, you know, we haven't seen anything because, again, none of these characters are those characters <laughs> yet. So right. we'll see where they end up, all of them in this um, in this movie. And we'll see how much they actually end up being in the movie. Uh, again, sure. I wouldn't be surprised if we see it more like a long Halloween thing where the Riddler or who knows, maybe someone else. I don't know. But the Riddler is like the main villain and, and Batman ends up interacting with all these other ones along the way. I think yeah, that's totally. the best way to use multiple villains in a Absolutely. movie without oversaturating it. Um, So that's what I'm hoping we get. Yeah, I, I, I think that'll be the case. I, I think the Penguin will be a like a lesser villain in this, whereas yeah, the Riddler is really going to be the battle between Batman trying to, you know, square up against the Riddler mentally. Yeah. Uh, which is which is what I want. You want to focus on one, you know, conflict. Otherwise, they all kind of get watered down. Um, so I, I think that would be the case. Same with like Catwoman. You know, she'll show yeah. up, be part of it, but she won't be integral to the, the conflict of the story. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's an, and then again, with the whole the, the integral part is this overall mystery that's in this movie. Yep. That's that's what everyone has said. That's what Matt Reeves said. And it's something we haven't gotten to see from Batman movie yet. And so that was great. I cannot uh, that's, wait. That may, that may be the part I'm most excited about it, if not just for the look, because, yeah, like the, the other thing I love about this trailer, the fact that, you know, they, they saved it for last is that it completely 
silenced so many of the naysayers that have been yeah. just poo-pooing Robert Pattinson, poo-pooing this new Batman. <laughs> because I mean, like no matter what video you go to, you look at the comments and you will you'll find many, many comments to say I was I was, you know, a little bit on board. And then when he beats up the the one thug in like a 14 punch combo, I was sold. And it was it was just so great to see the pendulum swing and everyone being like, okay, this is now jumped to the top of my radar for 2021. Yeah, he throws like what is it like thirteen punches in like eight seconds? Eight seconds, yeah. Uh, which is which is great because you know even if you don't love the suit, you have to at least love the fact that he can move yeah. that fast with the suit. Which as great as the other suits have been, there's always that limiting factor of not being able to turn their head or they can't move as much. So it's, mm-hmm. it's always trying to find a way to choreograph the fight around that. But this is like, hey, if he can move like that with this suit. I don't mind it looking a little bit weird. Yeah, and can we all agree that this is the single greatest Batman fighting anything we've ever seen and this movie hadn't even come out yet? I mean, uh, are, you think it's better than The Warehouse already? I think it's a million times better than The Warehouse. Okay, I mean, look, I, I hate that movie, but I still love The Warehouse for because it's not just the the stupid, trendy, one-shot long take. It's, it's, yeah. it's edited perfectly and it's great, but it's still, you know, got some dumb stuff, but... I don't know. I'll, I'll have to see if if the whole movie is like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm on board. Uh, I, I'm totally fine calling this the best fighting Batman ever. But that, that is a title that the Snyder fans are not going to give up lightly. I I on I could not care less about what any Snyder fan thinks about anything. No, because they're also not Batman fans. They're Snyder right, fans. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yes. that I mean, that's obvious. But yeah, I yeah. think that's the greatest single Batman fighting thing we've ever seen. I, I, I think, it really I was, think, for sure. I think it fits the character better than a warehouse fight, better, better than yeah. anything yeah. else. Because that's the ultimate thing with Batman. Batman isn't a as, mu- as much a I'm going to jump into this thing of a million people and take... 20 of them out all at the same time right and he can do that but that's not normally the mo of batman batman's mo is i'm gonna sneak around and take everyone out one at Self. a time and yeah. scare the crap out of everybody in the process that that's yeah like the uh like the the shit or the the warehouse container right. scene from batman begins that's which is the greatest batman scene ever put on film as of this point yeah um yeah. i don't i really don't think that's a question and if anyone does question i think you're wrong um, right. Uh, yeah. The introduction of Batman and Batman Begins is the greatest Batman thing we've seen so far um, in totally. any movie ever. Um, and but this the fighting, yeah. But this is it's it's the best type of Batman fight because it's people because again he's still early in this he's still yeah. kind of a legend or people still don't really know what's going on and so mm-hmm. he comes in gets a guy mouthing off to him and he just absolutely obliterates <laughs> one person him. and the look on everyone else's face is so yeah. perfect. It's it, like, that is what Batman is. He, he does the minimum wow. possible. It's, it's, it's a uh, deception and psychological warfare. Yeah. Right. It's um, the theatricality and deception thing. Like exactly. He, he wins his battles before he even has to do them, at least against the normal criminals. That's the whole point of the Batman suit. Uh. That's a good point, yeah, because the warehouse fight, he is just a brute. He goes, in, I mean, he's literally bulletproof, as yeah. we see, because his cow is bulletproof, which completely right. changes the way Batman fights. So, like, we're the perfect way to see how Batman, like, handles the situation is if you play the Arkham games where you have to survey, like, all the thugs, and it's like, oh, this guy has a rifle. You have to take him out first and quietly, or he's going to F you up. Um, mm-hmm. So that's a great point. And my favorite, I think my favorite shot from the trailer, which kind of, understated is a shot right before the title where you just see batman stand up i'm guessing it's right after he beats the crap out of that guy and he stands up and you just see the thugs in the forefront just all back (laughs) away and like uh who's gonna take him next yeah i love that shot so much that's what what i'm talking about the the look on everyone's face is tells the whole story again it's 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 the moment it's the moment to, to me the greatest character introduction of all time in the history of film is in the first john wick movie um, mm, that's a good one. Uh, when the when the Russian whines <laughs> yeah, a... at at the the uh, the body shop guy for touching yeah. his son, and he just goes, "He stole John Wick's car," and he just goes, "Oh, <laughs> oh." <laughs> <laughs> no, you're and totally right. That is that type of moment. It, it's it's that type of thing, and, and that that's the type of character Batman it needs to be in the minds of the 
you know, everyday criminals. Like that, yeah. that's, that's the point of the character. Yeah. And, and then it's just punctuated perfectly by what he says, where everyone, including myself, is was expecting him to say, I'm Batman. Yep. But we don't even get that. Again, we get something different, but something just as true to the character, which is him saying, I'm Vengeance. And, and also, can we talk about how, how great his voice is? Oh, it's good. I mean, we I was we heard him say that. like two lines, and it's perfect. It, it sounds great. Again, it is, it's a real voice which is what i want from batman yep. i don't want it to be robotic or hockey pads but I agree. it but also again fr- from a freaking brit it sounds great i'm like mm-hmm. yeah totally this is intimidating is it's you know like that the kind of golden pipes of kevin conroy but yeah i, I love it and it, so oh that was such a great scene anyway so that's yeah so th- again th- that's just another perfect part of this this whole thing. And um, now there's some other questions about the very last scene in this uh, in yeah. this trailer, yeah. which is where Batman is. You, you, you hear Bruce Wayne's voice and you hear another voice that you might assume is the Riddler because we heard that earlier. Uh, it's totally going to be the Riddler, right? Or it's himself and it's a conversation between Bruce and Batman, which is something that was hinted at with Matt Reeves at the panel as well when he said one of the big inspir- one of his inspirations for this movie was Batman Ego sure um, which is a comic I think came out in 2006 and um, it, the whole comic is basically Batman makes a mistake a whole family ends up dying and then you have him kind of breaking psychologically and having this whole giant conversation with Batman Batman's like this weird giant entity and it's Bruce Wayne talking to Batman over the methods that they use, what's right, yeah, um, who needs to be in in control, uh, a lot of that stuff. I mean, we've seen things like this before, yeah. but it's it's fleshed out more than we've seen it in anything else, at least more than anything I've ever read. Yeah, and, as, uh, as cool as that would be, I, 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 I'm pretty much 100% sure that's the Riddler because the person talking, you can clearly tell is – talking behind a, a, a mask, the same mask that the Riddler is wearing, you know, earlier in the trailer where it's, you know, muffled. And it, I mean, it sounds exactly like the, 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 if you are justice line earlier. So yeah, as cool as that would be, I'm pretty sure at least in this scene, it's, it's, you know, referring to a conversation between him and the Riddler, but who knows? Maybe, th- maybe there is a factor later on in the movie of because him having a big, a big part of this movie is that it's year two of Batman. That sure. Bruce has had this big grand plan and it has not worked out the way he has thought. He's not Which had the effect on the city that he wanted. Um, yeah. It's not it's not going well. Um, and that's kind of the whole thing of him questioning what he's doing and, and the the. Uh, I blanked on the word I'm looking for, the usefulness of it. Yeah, yeah. effectiveness of, of what he's doing. And, and sure. And that's a big element of that. And um, Which I love. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that a lot, too, because that's another thing we haven't we've seen in, in little bits and pieces. Yeah. Um, the only thing the only thing we've seen that to that extent is in the cut scenes from Batman Forever with. Uh, oh, yeah, with yeah, yeah. All of that was cut, which is to me Dumb. some of the greatest <laughs> Bruce Wayne scenes we've ever seen in any movie. Yeah. And I'm still angry that for some reason they thought it was a good <laughs> idea to cut all of the character development with him, um, especially because it's just Val Kilmer and how amazing he is as an actor. They basically sure, got to, the they the gutted better. all of his best acting scenes, which yeah. is just frustrating. But Travis, so yeah. We got to see that in that, but we haven't seen that really in any other movie. In the Bale movies, he doesn't really care about being Batman. It's just about Rachel the whole time. Yeah, you know, I mean, like he never like once he becomes Batman after he says, you know, I'm Batman to Falcone is basically, okay, I just got to keep doing what I'm doing. We never really see him ever doubt what he's doing as Batman unless it comes to the whole, you know, Rachel. The only thing thing. he ever does is he's like, well, I need to keep doing this till I don't have to be Batman anymore. And you're like, pretty much. "Uh, Yeah. No, Nolan, I I don't, don't think you understand the character. Um, Mm -hmm. It's not a Batman is not a means to an end. No, no, it's it's a it's a full on commitment. That's why I think, maybe it's, maybe it's that's not even a commitment. It, it's not yeah. even a commitment. It's it's Bruce Wayne died. 
Sacrifice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bruce Wayne's dead. Like he died with his parents, and yeah. So maybe maybe Phantas- Maybe Phantasm's like the closest thing we've come to that in terms yes. of like. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It is. Um, but it'll be cool to see it live action like this for sure, and mm-hmm. definitely fleshed out more. Yeah. And so far, there doesn't seem to be a single love interest in this movie. No, good point. I haven't thought about that. That we don't need one. I am so excited for that because yeah. that is one thing we have never gotten to see: is Batman without a stupid shoehorned love interest. Yeah, in every yeah. single movie. I didn't even think about that. Good point. Love interest. The only movie that it works is in the Adam West Batman movie because it's as Bruce yeah. Wayne, not as Batman, and he just throws her in jail at the end. <laughs> yeah. Because he's Batman. Of course. That comes first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's a good point. I didn't think about that. I mean, I'm sure there might be some a playful, not even chemistry, but like banter between him and Catwoman. That's but, fine. That's yeah, that's fine. fine. That's what it's there for. That works yeah. with both characters. Yeah. Um, but now but, you're right. Good point. Good point. Again, even, and you might say, oh, Batman Returns, it was Catwoman. It's like, no, 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 no. It was Bruce no. Wayne and Selina Kyle. Yeah. Like, not even, anyway, I know, I know that's happened before in the animated series. It was Bruce Wayne's sleep. Like, I know it's happened before, but I don't care. I don't want it in a movie. I, no. I don't. I, I want a Batman movie. At, at least give us one movie without it, especially the first one, which is so brilliant. To, if, like, if, if they are going to have one down the line, which I wouldn't be surprised, uh, at least don't have it in this one. Because, yeah, establish Gotham, establish your Batman and all the characters before you get into all that. Yes. Please, yeah. please. And again, yeah, you can. There is a way to do it. And again, sure. and I'm the wrong person to do it because I hate most love interests. Um, you do. You movies. really do. <laughs> because again, almost any movie ever in Hollywood history, they're all. If it's not like a rom com or something like that, it's if it's an action movie. Ninety yep. percent of the time, it's a forced love interest. Sure. Um, and so usually it's just not done well at all and it hasn't been done well in any batman movie um as much I don't, as I, I don't yeah i don't mind him as much but you're definitely not wrong it, it's the only it, it's it's and you know yeah it's it's not it's unbearable yeah, like in bat in batman begins is probably the best one no it's fine yeah out of any of them it's not even good in that one but at least it doesn't take away exactly from anything else in all right. the other movies it does as much as i love yeah. batman forever the weakest part Sure. Is that stupid Chase thing. Murden, yeah. and, and I don't even hate Nicole Kimmon. I don't even think oh. she's terrible in that movie. I think no, the I character's either. terrible, but right. it's just, and her yeah. purpose, yeah. Yeah. It's just yeah, it's just pointless. But um Yeah, because it's usually to take Batman away from being Batman. It's like, no, no, no. Yeah, no, that's always that's in every fault. movie, it's always, oh no, I'm in love, so now I don't have to be Batman anymore. It's like, no, 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 sure. that's not the point. The only time that's ever worked is in Phantasm. Phantasm again. <laughs> but again, it's 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 but it's done differently. It's before he, yes, it's before he's Batman. Yeah. It's done differently. So Yeah, totally. Anyway, that has That's nothing to point. do with anything else. I just it's just a thing I thought about when rewatching this for like the eight billionth time. It's like, you know what? We th- of all this casting stuff, there's there's not a love interest character yet. No, I, I didn't even pick up on that. Good point. So hey, also, can we t- can we take a moment to appreciate how awesome Jeffrey Wright looks and sounds in the role? Uh, yes, it, it's <laughs> one of those. It's one of those roles where, like, as soon as he comes in, you're just like, "Oh yeah, why, why hasn't he always been Alfred?" Because <laughs> because look, you and I are huge. We, we're not into this whole forced diversity. We need to yeah, recast no, roles. No, no. But this is one of those cases where. It doesn't matter the race. No. The actor who they got for the role is perfect for the role. Yes. Jeffrey Wright is perfect yes. regardless of what color he is because his yes. voice is perfect. When he's reading the riddle, it's like, yes. His and he, like, I, I, I love the scene of whatever like argument is going on at the, the Gotham headquarters yes. and Gordon has to pull Batman yes. away. You can tell like Gordon is like the only one. Like He's like, come on, man. Like You have to stay with me. I'm the only one here who has your back. Like You can't be... You know, you can't be fighting the police. It's like mm-hmm. it's just it's you and me in on, on this. I love that. Yeah, that, that quick scene. Yeah, that's great. That that yeah, J- Jeffrey Wright just already seems perfect. And again, as this is one of those where again, there hasn't been any moment where we've questioned anything. It was one of those where as soon as the casting came out, I was like, oh, oh we didn't even think boy. about that. That's perfect. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, it wasn't so, gimmicky at all. No, it's just it's a perfect casting. Great, yeah. we really have yet to had a have a bad. Uh, Commissioner Gordon. I mean, other you than kidding me? We've one. only had one good one. 
I mean, uh, well, granted, we didn't get to see J.K. Simmons, but he would have been good. True. Well, I think it would. I, I mean, yeah, he's good. Yeah, I mean, he's good enough. He could do whatever he wants. Um, exactly. Yeah. But uh, he would never have been my pick for Commissioner Gordon. Um, I don't know him as Commissioner Gordon. Just seems odd. And again, we didn't get to see anything, so maybe maybe it would have yeah. been maybe it would have been great. Maybe we'll see more of him in the Snyder. A Justice League movie. I'm sure we I probably hope so, will. He did, he did all that working out for nothing. <laughs> Got jacked. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, obviously Gary Oldman was was a fantastic. Commissioner yeah, I mean he set, he set the standard. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we really haven't seen a good Gordon. Um, other than I mean Neil Hamilton's a perfect Gordon for for the '66 show. Oh um, sure. But that's uh, a different type of Gordon. What, what, what what's his name? Now. The, what's his name? Who's Gordon in the '90s movies? They didn't let uh, do anything. So yeah, I mean, he doesn't even count. I don't really count him. Yeah, he, he didn't get to do anything. Um, no, he literally turns on a light, if that. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's that's kind of a shame. But yeah, no, yeah. he he's 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 fantastic. I'm I'm super excited to get to see what he does in um yep in this role for sure. Oh yeah. Um, shoot, I had something else I wanted to talk about. And I forgot what it was. I'm trying to think oh, if yeah, we yeah, yeah. Uh, oh. kind of along the Gordon thing, just just seeing Batman at a crime scene with police. Oh, yeah. It is so, so refreshing cool because we've basically never seen this. We saw a little bit. We've, we saw a little bit Dark of it Knight. in the Dark Knight. Um, yeah. And, and that's pretty much it. But it was that's never like it. this. It no. was always done. And, and it was done fine, you know, where he. You know, it shows up after or whatever like that that's fine but in yeah. this one he literally just walks straight into a full a full crime scene with all the cops just there the forensics taking pictures and everything yeah. and it's just like yes finally yeah finally you don't have to have the police chasing him all the time no again th- but there's precedent for that and it's fine of course but yeah it's gonna happen eventually you know one way or another but, yeah but i love and again you you mentioned it with that like pull apart scene in the jail yeah. the police don't like batman that's one thing that has never been the case in any comics except for the 66 show the the police don't like him it's it's pretty much just gordon yeah yeah, I love that. I because I, I, I love because that's really you really had to hone in on the relationship between Batman and Gordon, and that's one of the, the flaws of the Gordon from the ninety nineties movie is that yeah. he he has a relationship with Batman, whereas no. you look at stuff like Year One, which is perfect because yeah. it really hits home about how both are in many ways just as important for the faith of Gotham or the fate of Gotham, you yeah. know. And so I love it when they're when they have a just a really and, close relationship and that they need each other to be effective. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because Gordon can't be affected by himself because it's all corrupt police force. Right. Batman can't be affected by himself just because, you know, I, I, well, I mean, I guess he could. He could, but he won't be like, he won't be able to get as much done. Whereas people will write him off as some crazy vigilante just beating up people. Whereas Gordon's like, no, he's the guy who's solving crimes and, you know, taking people off the street. So he's kind of like the, like the like the PR guy for Batman in a lot of ways, you yeah, know, where yeah, he's yeah. the one who's like, no, we need him. Yeah, and again, it's 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 a shaky relationship with the cops because again, Batman is constantly showing him up. Like, that, oh yeah, the cops don't are never gonna like Batman because he's doing their job for him. Yeah, or or they're corrupt and they're like, oh, right. this guy is, you know, he's onto us or whatever. Right. So, you know, yeah, that, no, that's a whole uh, element to that relationship. And all this seems to be in place. Again, we've just seen one little thing about it, but already all this stuff seems to be conveyed. Yeah, it just shows a, a really great, better understanding of all of it. And, you know, and that goes back to everything we've heard from Matt Reeves so far is that he really seems to have a great grasp on the whole lore of Batman. Mm hmm. Yep. It's not yeah. just the, the typical research that every director and actor does. We're like, oh, I'm playing so and so now, so I bought a whole bunch of comics. So I'm gonna read them. It's like, no, it's <laughs> this is this is re- this really is a diehard fan who's been wanting to do a Batman film for years. Yeah, you can tell. Uh, let's see what else can we talk about. We've been talking for forever about this two minute, two, it's such two a minute, gr- twenty such a- minute trailer. All right. Um, the bet the Batman suit. What are your thoughts yes. on the Batman suit? Because again, my thoughts are. Don't hate the suit. Don't mm-hmm. love the suit. It's fine. It just it is what it is. Um, but again, according to everything we've heard, or, or a few things that I've heard, there's going to be another suit. This is still oh, no doubt. This is still an no early doubt. suit. This is still a piece together 
not Figure quite it out. not not a prototype, yeah. but but still a piece together work in progress towards. Yeah. And again, th- that's the that's the other thing. Batman's one of the few characters where you don't have like you can change a Batman suit because it totally. makes sense. Like most most things, you're changing yeah. suits just to sell toys or make sell it look toys. different or whatever. But and yep. that's I'm, and then sure that's part of it. But it and works with Batman yeah. because. He's constantly upgrading stuff. He's constantly yeah. changing stuff. Like it makes sense. Yeah, uh, I, like I, I, it, it's not my favorite, of course. But the more I see it, the more it grows on me. Yeah. And and especially again with the color palette and the way they light everything in the movie, it works perfectly. Whereas, let's be honest, if you take most Batman suits and put it in like hospital lighting, you can see everything. They do look kind of dumb. Whereas. Darkness, shadow, all that complements the suit, mm-hmm. um, which is why the, the Justice League Batman looks so terrible is because we're seeing the yeah. suit in this broad daylight and, and crappy it's, it's lighting. it's a terrible suit, too. And it's, it's the lesser version <laughs> of the original suit. But, um, right. but no, like it, no I, I like the suit the more and more I see it. And again, I also know that there's going to be a different one, whether it's the next movie or the end of this movie, whenever. So I'm not, yeah. you know, too attached to it. But one thing I do have to mention is I love – uh, Robert Pattinson's eyes when he's yeah. looking in the suit. There's a scene where it's him and Catwoman going at it, and it's right after he dodges her kick and he looks at her, mm-hmm. and he's got he's got the Batman stare down. Whereas I'm a huge uh, proponent for white eyes, mm-hmm. but but Robert Pattinson's got that thousand yard stare, where it's like yeah. you don't need the white eyes. You got to let those you got to let those scenes speak for themselves, and they do, especially at the end when he's still got the the black makeup on, which I love. That's another part we need to talk about. Finally, Con- we're getting continuity. The black makeup is there because it's yep. going to be there. No matter how ridiculous yeah. it looks, it would be there. So, yeah, because yeah. it, it just shows you the mentality filmmakers have had where they think, oh, well, when he takes off the mask, he's going to have black makeup on, but that looks stupid. And it's like, well, you're already doing a character that dresses up like a bat. So why is that part stupid? But the rest of it isn't. So it's like have faith in what you're and what you're showing is like also take- batman should never take off the mask unless he's in the bat cave well that too thank you very much but it's like yeah it's like <laughs> audiences will understand if he takes off the mask and has makeup on they're like oh well he's wearing makeup previously why wouldn't he have it on right. so thank you matt reeves for finally giving us that yep 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 i like it um uh if i had one teeny sort of complaint at all about robert pattinson or batman I am not a fan of his hair. Yeah, the hair's the hair's kind of all over the place. I do not like the hair; it's way too long for Bruce Wayne hair. Yeah, or at least like comb it over in a way. Um, no, it's yeah, too it's, long. it's weird. It's too long. yeah, a little bit too long. I, I'll, I'll I'll agree with that. Yeah, that's not a that's not a Wayne uh, head of Wayne Enterprises billionaire <laughs> hair. It, it's it's just not. And uh, but I, I also saw something that was like maybe he's still isn't quite the Bruce Wayne that, you know, people come to know and expect where he's, he's learning that as well, where he can't be moody all the time because people might connect the dots. So maybe he, while he's also kind of creating Batman to be better and better, he's also having to create the image of Bruce Wayne of the billionaire playboy philanthropist that doesn't care. So maybe he's honing that as well. Yeah, no, that's, that's fine. Yeah. That, I mean, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. And again, so if that happens, like, I'll be for it. This is like me scraping to find any yeah. possible thing <laughs> negative right. about because there's just not. If that's the only thing we complain about, that is a good freaking sign. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's the only thing. And it's not even a real complaint. It was just kind of like, eh, he could have better no. hair. Um, exactly. And especially how, how freaking obsessed we are with Batman. We're, I mean, we're going to nitpick. And if that's the only thing we find. That's, oh that's, yeah! If that's it's the only thing we find, then it's freaking airtight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll pick the crap out of stuff. Um, oh yeah! We, oh, we're yeah. the wrong people. Look, sometimes I wish I was one of those people who could just be like, "Hey, this is Batman" or whatever, and I can just enjoy right, things. Right. But unfortunately, I'm just not. I sometimes I wish I could be, but I'm just sure. I'm not. It's, I'm just, I'm not. it's passion. Whenever you're passionate, you're. You're gonna you're gonna well, obsess I, over it. I guess it. I am a little bit because I'm I absolutely love Batman Forever, and if you tried to nitpick that thing, oh, you totally could. Like even I I I'm not even gonna argue that, but I still do love that. So I guess I can do it a little bit, but oh sure. Um, but yeah, not 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 currently. Um, no, not with any newer it, Batman. It's, coming it's much out. easier doing that with older stuff that can't hurt you anymore. Nostalgia, yeah, um, especially with your favorite actor. Sure, yeah, that's fair. Um, 
I don't know what else we can break down with this thing, man. Talked about it for 45 minutes. I know. I think we've gone through everything. Yeah, I, I don't know. There's been a debate about the, the thugs, the makeup they're wearing, if yeah, it's that's Joker a little makeup. It, it's a little I, weird. I can't tell if it's, yeah, I can't tell if it's clown makeup or like skeleton makeup. I'm not sure, but it's obviously some game that's it, kind it of taken over Gotham. It doesn't look really like clown makeup, but. Yeah, I don't think so either. It looks more like skull makeup. But it's still it's still kind of weird and it's still kind of yeah, off putting. I'm sure they'll explain it in the movie and it will sure. understand what is it regards to. But yeah, it's weird. Although I am seeing all the dumb comments about, oh man, just imagine if Joaquin Phoenix's Joker came into this world. It's like that. Too bad. You know, they've already said this is his own movie, so you're not going to get that, which is why it was dumb in the first place. But. It's like, I agree. Yeah. I agree. And I that's agree. A, that's, but that's okay, okay. That, that's another thing. Uh, yeah, yep. I, I don't know if this yep. is where you were going, but I was going. I'm sure it was. Um, okay. Your thoughts on DC just saying screw any sort of continuity? We're just gonna make whatever we want. Good thing, bad thing. I think good thing overall because as uh, yeah, as DC has proven when apart. they try to get yeah when they try to get too ambitious. It does not go well. Obviously, that's also who they put in charge. But I'd much rather them focus and just get Batman right than than, than try and do him incorporating into the whole universe yeah, and yeah. getting it wrong. As much, but even though that's the one thing I would love to see, I would love to see the the longevity of the MCU, but with the characters from DC. That's that's all I want, but not at the cost of you know seeing this Batman joke with freaking uh what ezra miller flash and some crappy team of movie no so i'd much rather this be its own self-contained trilogy or four film franchise whatever than than it be soiled by trying to bring it in you know shoehorn somehow yeah what about you um no i i i agree i we we talked about this before the or we we've talked about this before the element of oversaturation after sure. being such a protected character for so many decades yeah it's now all right well now we're bringing back Ben Affleck now we're bringing back Michael Keaton and yeah. all at the same time that we're trying to establish a new Batman and you know there's there was a Batman on Gotham there there's a ba- there's yep. a Batman on Titans, Titans. it's yep. like but but at the same time that's kind of been dc's problem for a long time now i mean especially comics wise i don't think they have a single comic title without batman in it now um and it is a it's a problem but it also adds to how they can stand out especially from marvel with the whole multiverse thing and having different timelines and different stuff and and i think it's strong enough at least this movie's strong enough that it, it yeah. it'll it'll you know I don't think it will be tarnished by anything else, especially from the reaction we've seen from this compared with everything else. Even though there exactly. was big reaction, you know, huge reaction still to the Snyder movie and stuff. Oh, sure. This one still dwarfed it. Yeah. Um. So I think that's fine. So part the, the biggest part of me that was worried about it was more worried as far as what it would do to this movie. Yeah. But now I feel like that's kind of been resolved. And yeah. so it doesn't really bother me. It's a character I would like. I, I like the exclu- the exclusivity of it, but yeah, yeah, because he works on his own so well, better right. than any other character. But at the same time, I don't think I don't think it's necessarily going to be harmed by. I don't know. I I think it's fine. I I'm fine with it. Um, yeah. I, and regardless. They're geniuses for the Michael Keaton thing because I would never watch that movie and now I 100% will. So, (laughs) like, that's not even a question. I don't care if he's in one scene, I'm going to watch it uh, to see Michael Keaton again. Um, So, I mean, they're they're geniuses. Ultimately, it's genius. Or desperate. It's it's genius. And, uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see how it works. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see I, how, we'll I see how know. it works. I, but I, I have faith in Matt Reeves, and I have a feeling, much like how the trailer sold the show, I think once this movie comes out and it is anywhere near as good as it appears it's going to be, I think it's going to put Batman 
back in the spotlight where we forget that the freaking the Dark Knight, you know, trilogy or rises was competing with the whole Avengers the same summer yeah, and it held yeah, its own. Yeah. And it course. just shows you the, the, the power of the character where it's like, hey, you can have your your five film phase franchises, but literally if you get Batman right, people will flock to it like freaking sheep, you know. <laughs> but again, but as we found out, it doesn't work just for it to be Batman. No, because, no. Uh, it is possible to mess it up. They they didn't oh, think God. it was, um, yeah. it, but it, it was. Hey, every franchise, no matter and, how and, and, lucrative. And that's that wasn't even the worst part of that movie. But um, no. uh, which, which, to be honest, is pretty ironic. That the part we were all like, yeah, about the most ended up not even being the worst part of the movie. Not even close. Oh, no, no, not at all. Uh, anyway, why can we just get like, why do we have to have the best suit be in the Ben Affleck movie? I know. Like, why do I we know. have to waste the best on screen Batman suit for that? I, I know it's, it's a damn shame. Like I, <laughs> like I, I want to buy like the merch from that stuff just cause it's such a cool freaking logo and suit. And oh, everything. Yeah. But, but at the if same was... time, I'm just like, oh, but I don't, oh, I don't want to walk around with batman v superman anything though no god no although i, I disagree i hate his bat symbol from the eh, movie it's too, it's too fat I, yeah but it's the dark knight returns so i don't mind yeah which i've never liked but i love i love this bat symbol because it looks like an actual freaking bat yeah i mean it's not my favorite but it's fine i'm sorry no, my, i'm my always favorite. i'm 100 a, a yellow oval batman fan uh, you see, I, I love the Hodge one. To me, that's the perfect bat symbol. That's oh, I like that Hodge. one too. I got a shirt with that on it. I I, I oh, love yeah. that logo too. But no, no, no. I'm a I'm a I'm a Yellow Moon Batman fan. Uh, all the way. I get that. I get that. Way. No, totally. And, um, and we'll see it again the, the, in, the, the, in the Flash movie. The best Hopefully. one we've gotten to see is in Batman Forever. That's the only time we've gotten to see a good Yellow Moon bat symbol because they changed it for the Tim Burton they movies. Did. They I don't did. know why, right. but why on the the, 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 po- the posters. The cover of the movie, it's all the real logo. And then, but on the suit, it's this weird, different one. Yeah, you're right. I don't, I don't know, know why, why they did that. It's so weird. But, Who knows? Uh, but no, in the, the, the Val Kilmer movie, not not the kind of weird sonar suit at the end, which is no, fine, no, no. actually. I don't even mind that suit. But, um, yeah, it's fine. The, the one at the beginning is that the actual yellow, the actual yellow oval. And it's the only time. Yeah, that's look good. Yeah, and I agree. Other than the nipples, I think that suit's awesome. Sure. I love the Panther Batman suit. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyway, I don't know what else we can break down with this. Um, th- I, I think we've covered everything. Right. So slight divergent here on okay. uh, not not the movie, but um, on um, Batman. Still Batman, though. Did you see the news that we're getting Batman the Long Halloween? I did. Yeah. It was a two part. Um, yes. A two part. And kind of like Dark Knight Returns. And um but I'm sorry. At this point, I'm just like, yeah. all right, let's just have it come out and we'll see. Because well, yeah, DC, has, has, DC has not come out with a really good Batman animated movie in seven years. Um, yeah. It, basically, year one was kind of the yeah. last one. There's been some OK ones since then. But sure. You know, what? That, actually, that's a lie. Uh, Batman Brave and the Bold and Scooby-Doo yeah. was a very yeah. good Batman movie. And yeah, Batman and, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was a great Batman movie, too, surprisingly. Yeah, and, and Return of the Cape Crusaders. Or, um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the Return of the Cape Crusaders and, and Batman vs. Two-Face were, were perfect. Yeah, yeah, but at but, least yeah. in terms of uh, story adaptation movies, no. Yeah, the yeah, adaptations have one. been horrible. We, we had God. that weird, terrible Batman uh batman versus robin oh, yeah, the, bat- bad. the bad grant morrison adaptation bad that was like shoehorned in with the animated universe yeah. and then they did it again with court of owls and it was just like what oh are yeah you doing you're just you're shoehorning it into this universe but trying to do this story too in a 90 minute movie it, it's that's one thing they're though, not, i think they're not like unwatchable garbage but they're just not very good that's the no. problem. We, we've seen mostly we there hasn't been a, there hasn't been too many just flat out terrible Batman movies, but they're mostly no. just mediocre. And then you right. get like the killing joke where you're like, I, I don't know. We're bit. not even counting the beginning part that that was that they added. But even no. just the thing itself, it's just like 
could you have put less effort into this? Yeah, that, that is my only hope because I think they put didn't so they little that... effort into the Killing Joke. It, it's like yeah, I don't yeah, understand. Didn't they announce... You have Kevin Conroy, Mark Hamill, finally getting the chance to do this. You know, the greatest Batman Joker story ever. You get them freaking acting their hearts out in this thing, and you animate it like you're a five year old. <laughs> Yeah, the worst animation ever. But did, I, I do think there is a little bit of hope because didn't they announce like the current continuation of their anime universe is done? So hopefully, yes, yes, Long did. Halloween will be in a different style, and and so hopefully that might be a little bit better in that regard. I hope so. I really hope. Yeah, because so. I was so over the the lazy just designs and everything they've done for the last couple of movies. Yeah, so that's apparently coming out. Uh, first part's coming out next summer, and then the next part's coming out okay. in the fall. So. We'll see. We'll see. Again, Long Halloween, great Batman story. Great, great I, Batman, I, I, yeah. I think it's a tiny bit overrated. Um, I'll agree. Yeah, I'll agree. I think it's, I mean, I, I definitely think it's one of the greatest Batman stories ever. I'm not arguing that, but. The, the influence alone it has is sure. incredible. Yeah, but but there are definitely better stories. You I, know, but I don't, itself. I just don't think it's quite at the level everyone else says it is. Like, I. I don't know. I think I would definitely put in the top 10. No questions there. Sure. But sure. just maybe slightly not as much as everyone. I, I just think Jeff Loeb for me is interesting as a writer. He's very much sure. a one trick pony when it comes yeah, to yeah. his stories. It's giant ensemble movie. Let's use every single character. But then the villain's a new one. I, you know, it's yeah, it's very. And I think that was done better by Scott Snyder in uh, uh Black, uh, Black Mirror. Shoot. Oh yeah, yeah. Is that it? Yeah, Black Mirror. Yeah. Because now they made that TV show Black Mirror, so now I can. Oh, I get, yeah. I get confused whether <sighs> that was it or not. Yeah, uh, and oh, that's not even. Bruce I know what you're Wayne. talking about though. And that's not no. even. That's not even Bruce Wayne. That's Dick Grayson. But that they do that same. He, that's Zach, true, yeah. uh, Scott Snyder does that, where he takes you know, and it's the James Gordon character, and I think that's done better than. Jeff Loeb did in Hush or in Long Halloween or Dark Victory, which are all kind of the yeah. same story in just different they ways. Are. <laughs> and I, I, I would put Hush probably even slightly better than Long Halloween. Yeah, um, I would too. Those are those are right up there. I mean, th- again, they're still great. I'm not bashing on anything. I love the Long Halloween, but um, no, absolutely. But yeah, we're just saying, yeah, it it does kind of. I don't know. It's become too big for its own good where you bit. actually read it and they're much better stories. Yeah. 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 Um, but anyway, so that's interesting. And again, just, just do the book. Just, just, just do the book. <laughs> yes, please. That's it. Don't just do like do you did with Hush. No, yeah. no, no, no. Just do the freaking book. It's not I, hard. It doesn't do the, matter. Do it. it doesn't matter if we know what happens. We don't care. Yeah. You, you've got the blueprint the there. Story. <laughs> just do yeah. it. You've got the blueprint there. Literally, all you have to do is just find some animators who are in their first just year and, it. and it'll and it'll work. <laughs> just draw the book, man. Although now you that's have not the true. You, you definitely cannot do an animation style as the long Halloween. You no, cannot no, no, no. do that. Never mind. You I, know, just, you gotta... I just mean good movie animators. Yeah. yeah animated yeah, movie yeah. guy. Yeah. Yeah. Again, the three best Batman movies of all time are animated ones other than Phantasm, which is on its own kind of separate. Yeah, that, that's separate not thing. fair. It's it's a separate thing completely um totally but you got under the red hood you then did dark knight return or didn't you year one and you did dark knight returns i agree you did pretty much from page to movie adaptations slight variations to condense it and whatever yeah which again is fine you can't do a whole six-part arc like under the red hood was yeah Um, and then but i i still I just watched year one last week after watching this trailer. That was great. And uh, because that that's the strong vibes that was coming off of this. Oh, very totally. year one esque. And it's just, you know, it's just, it's, it's great. It's, it's so it's well done. They just favorites. did the story. They just did the story. Yeah. It's so hard. You, again, you got all, you got all the ingredients there. It's like, why, why are you, why are you messing this up? Why are you trying to be too clever? That's why Dark Knight Returns is the best adaptation movie probably ever comic a- adaptation yeah. movie, because it literally is from panel to screen. Yeah. A- almost why... identically. They, they changed the, the biggest thing is they changed the timeline around. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mixing things kind of together instead of having everything all separate. But it, it's every, th- th- they didn't change anything. They, they didn't change nope. anything. They, they kept every weird Frank Miller thing in there because you you need to. The giant flying like, android yeah. babies that spray Joker yeah. gas. Yeah. Leave them in. 
it's in a book. We we like it. Leave it in. Yeah. <laughs> just just leave uh, it in. Why I, that's why I think Three Hundred is Zack Snyder's best movie because it was it was already there for him. It was all written. Same with all Watchmen. I say with Watchmen. Yeah. He did change some with Watchmen, and to be honest, I didn't mind the changes. Um, I didn't mind either. I actually think those changes were probably better. Uh, they they probably helped, but um. Yeah, yeah I agree. Uh, especially Night Owl, much better character in the movie than he was in a book. Um, or, or you know, using bombs instead of giant squid monsters or whatever. Yeah, having to be Doctor Manhattan instead of a giant right. psychic squid monster. Yeah, it worked. I think. Yeah, I think it, I, I, I agree. So, um, but yeah. Anyway, we'll see how that we'll see how that goes. We'll, we'll see. Yeah, but, but no, anyway, well, I, a lot of exciting stuff going on. God, yeah. Su- Suicide Squad. I'm all in with James. I'm, I'm for. Um. Uh. Wonder Woman, I, eh. I it it's lost its thunder, man. It really did. That that's by far the one that's going to take the biggest hit because of this. Yeah, because of these delays. It never had that much thunder with me. Um, I, I like. I was Wonder still Woman. looking I, forward to it though, because yeah, I, I really liked the it. first movie. I, I liked it fine, but you, it was, but you know, once the whole like once the trailers came out, it's like oh, the eighties nostalgia. I was like, okay, I'll I'll definitely see it, but it's not. I'm not going to kill myself to go see it. You know? I was fine with that. I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> but now I don't care anymore because it was delayed no, now, and now, now all this other stuff has come out and it's like, I don't even care. Yeah. It's gonna be, it's gonna, yeah, I do too. I mean, the, the movie, the movie atmosphere and field now is completely changed. We'll see how it is going forward, but I'm glad that, you know, the Batman, it says, you know, only in theaters because this is yeah. a movie I do not want to watch at home. I yeah. have to go. This is a movie. I will go opening night to go see. This is what to me movies, movie theaters are for. Yep. No, 100%. 100%. I need to see a Batman movie on opening night. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. I forgot you have it. You absolutely do. And yeah. I missed the last one. I don't remember why. Something was going on, and I couldn't go like on that hmm. Thursday night or whatever. Because we went on yeah. Friday night. Yeah, we went We went the night after, yeah. Yeah. But didn't we go to like – we went to like a midnight showing on Friday night or something, didn't we? It was we late, wasn't IMAX. it? Yeah, it was late. It was IMAX, yeah. Yeah, it was a late one. Anyway. I'll never forget that. I, I really wish no. I had only watched that movie that one time. Oh, sure. <laughs> it's still my favorite movie cause experience. Because at the time, it was perfect. Uh, oh, yeah. In my eyes of seeing Batman for the first time on a movie screen uh, in, in IMAX, it, I didn't, it was it was perfect at the time. And then on that's subsequent a, viewings, it's like, you know it. what, man? This movie is really <laughs> dumb, uh, <laughs> which is really a shame. But, um. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. I mean, I got to see Batman vs Superman in theaters, and that was another great That's... experience, but for the exact opposite reason. Me and a buddy right. sitting in the back making fun of the movie the whole time. I don't think I've ever As... laughed so much in a movie. It oh was, boy, uh, it was a lot of fun. It was. You have no idea how much fun that was. Yeah, mine was miserable. Mine was 3D, like up close, and me just shaking my head the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> yep, mine was employee screening, about 30 people in there, all employees, nice. and then uh, me, and, me, and, me and a buddy just sitting in the back just Roasting it. actively laughing at this whole movie. It was, um, yeah, it was, a, well, was a lot of fun. Well, to be fair, Mark, the only reason you did that is because they were dumb and didn't release the Ultimate Edition. Oh, yeah, that's why. That w- It would have been completely different had they done that. Yeah, I watched the Ultimate Edition, I was like, oh my gosh. This is this is perfect. Yeah, like Jesse Eisenberg yeah. is bald. He's not an idiot. He's a perfect Lex <laughs> yeah. Luthor. You know, everything is just exactly. fixed. Yep. Yep. And that's apparently what everyone's expecting to happen with Justice League. And it's just like, eh. and it will be different because I... it will be more of a change than the ultimate to that because it's Should, still oh, the same totally. movie. So it will be different. Yeah. But. But I, I I can't wait for the honeymoon phase to be over, and it's like okay, all like uh, like like new moon new mutants uh, just came out, and that's a movie people have been some people have been waiting for for three years. Poor and of course, guys. it came out and it's hot it's hot garbage, and I cannot wait for that to happen with Justice League. Where you have all these people who've jumped onto the bandwagon, they're hailing it as the the, the you know Ark of the Covenant thing that mm-hmm. you know we just had to have, and then they're finally going to see the movie. And it's like this is what you've been campaigning for for how many years? It's like. There you go. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get a lot of rose colored glasses with this movie for a long time because of oh, just the yeah. amount of effort these people have been. It's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a social cause now. It's not even a movie yeah. anymore. Yeah. Wait, and that part I agree with, um, sure. which, which is the worst part. Yeah, if it was it's for like any we're other both movie, sitting here and yeah. we're like, yeah, we're all for the director getting a chance to stick it to the movie theater that's or to the movie company that screwed him. Like, we're all for that. Just, yeah. you know, not someone that sucks. Yeah, not this director, please. <laughs> yeah, why can't we do it for uh, 
for um, John Favreau's Iron Man two or stuff or Joel Schumacher's yes. Batman Forever. Yeah, you don't even have to do anything with Joel Schumacher's one; it's already done. Right. Just let us see it. You don't have, you don't have to spend millions and millions of more dollars to do it. Just it's like let no, us see it. And they're not being assholes about it. Granted, Joel Schumacher passed away, unfortunately. But even John Favreau isn't stomping his feet and being like, "Ah, I never got to share my vision." Yeah. Yeah, which is is it, which is a shame. That is a shame because those are both yeah. movies that I love the way they yeah. are, but and they no, that still could better. be better. Oh yeah, yeah, that's <sighs> really heartbreaking. Watching the because uh, I watched all I've watched all of Iron Man two with with the commentary with John Favreau. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. just it's so heartbreaking because you're just you're hearing about all the stuff that could have been and and should have been yeah. and. Nope, it was all about building the MCU, which in the long run, you can't argue that they made the wrong choice. Right. It's but, the same thing with them and Edgar Wright on Ant Man. I would have loved to have seen his Ant Man, but if it didn't if it was some random movie that had no connection with the other ones, it would have thrown off the momentum, possibly. Yeah. yeah. So I so I, 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 get I get it, but and I still it love sucks. Iron Man too. Again, I don't care what anyone says. I think it's a great movie. <laughs> um anyway, we've been rambling around about way too much. But anyway, we have. the Batman, perfect. Looks trailer. awesome looks awesome yeah. i've only Cannot watched wait. it i've only watched it probably I don't know, at least probably 30 40 times and oh i watch it week. daily no doubt yeah <laughs> yeah it's 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 that good it's uh, that good i'm all oh, for it man. bring it on all right well thanks for listening guys we'll be back with uh an actual episode of the end cape crusaders review we're actually talking about the animated series and the the 66 show reviewing episodes at some point uh, hopefully within the next few weeks, whenever I finally get settled down, um, still, but we just had to with, talk about this. Yeah. yeah. Didn't been dealing with moving and stuff, but, uh, this came out and unfortunately we're getting this out way too late because the first time we tried to record it, uh, Ian's power went out. So there goes oh, the, the power internet. In the whole area went yeah. out. Yeah. It was weird. So we, that's why we're now not having this come out till a week later. Unfortunately, yeah. we, we were, we were all set to have it come out like two days after. And then yeah unfortunately it got delayed with that but we got to talk about it anyway just for our own selves and um, yeah yeah so uh so that, is, that does it for this special edition of the uncaped crusaders review uh, make sure and follow us on twitter at uncaped review you can follow me on twitter at marky mark brand you can follow me in bark bark do that as well go back and uh check out our backlog of episodes we have tons over 100 episodes of us going through every single batman movie ever made um and, and, the TV uh, series, and, yeah. and we've been going through the animated series and the 66 show Six. as well. Um, yeah. We're more than halfway through the animated series or we're close to halfway through the animated close series. Close halfway, I think. Yeah, and yeah. we're into season Damn. two in the um, 66 series as well. So we got a lot of stuff to check out with that. Um, all right. So that does it for this episode. Again, I'm Mark. I'm Ian. Talk to you guys next time.